Hi, YouTubers. This is Dave out in Western Pennsylvania. I'm a chemistry professor with a university in uh, Western PA, USA. I work with thin film composites. I work with uh, microbead gels. I work with aluminum and zinc air batteries. And I just want to show you uh, nothing pretty here, but it's a prototype. There's uh, the multimeter set up, the voltage. And I'm going to take a reading of this material I have in a plastic weigh dish. I'll tell you more about it in a minute. And that's paper toweling. It's over activated charcoal as an oxygen gatherer. And then in there is this gelatinous substance that I made. And it's packed over aluminum foil in that uh, plastic weigh dish. Let me put this down and see if we can get a reading here of the uh, potential. Let's see what we get. A hefty 1.24 volts, 1.25 volts. I'm not even passing any air through it. I'll have to put air holes in the plastic dish and uh, spread the surface area out on this. I'll be adjusting this. But uh, that's your aluminum air battery. And I'll peel this thing back. Uh, what was the uh, current on it? I think I was drawing about 10 milliamps the first time I looked at it and uh, let's see if I can get a milliamp reading I'll bring this over to milliamps let's see if we get a reading of current uh, it's about uh, going up so it's over three milliamps right now I have to work on it yeah it's going up it's going up this is just uh, quick and dirty give you an example of what I'm up to. It might help you generate ideas. There's paper toweling. Over that paper toweling, I've got a uh, little bit of uh, steel wool. And uh, that's over a bed of activated carbon. And that's where the air is occurring. The oxygen's getting uh, reduced. And then under that, let's see what we got. This is paper toweling insulator. And there's the gel I was talking about. And uh, behind that is aluminum foil. So here's the gel. Now, how was the gel made? It almost looks like a type of applesauce or something. It's cross-linked chitosan and carboxymethyl starch. I start with water-soluble starch. I'll give you the details. And I add carboxyl groups. Now the chitosan has amino groups and uh, after I prepare the gel, I'll give you my uh, website so you can see how I prepare these materials. Uh, I mix them together in a one-to-one -one mass ratio, the chitosan and the carbomethoxy, um, carbomethyl uh, starch, water-soluble starch I start with. I mix them together, I cross-link with aqueous glutaraldehyde and uh, it gels out around pH 6. I microwave it up for about 20 seconds to encourage cross links which optimize at pH 5 to 6. Anybody who studied organic knows imino linkages, shift basis form uh, best. The rate uh, for formation is very rapid around pH 5.5 or 6. And uh, then I add water, mix it up pretty well. The amber color you're seeing is uh, areas of higher cross linking. I have to experiment with that and uh, then I bring it to pH 10. I bring it on the alkaline side because this is where you get your maximum potential for the aluminum reaction. And uh, basically that is a gelatinous electrolyte. And at pH 10 we've got uh, carboxylate groups and essentially all free amines. And if I bring it up towards 7 or 8 I should have According to the henderson hasselback equation, buffers and uh, the pKa, pKb of the amine ammonium ion, uh, I should have a lot more charged uh, nitrogens, ammoniums. The cross-linking takes up some of the nitrogens, but then my goal is to make charged polyelectrolytic membranes, gelatinous membranes, and uh, try to develop this into aluminum air batteries. 
So I'll put, I'll put all the details down and this gel has been drying in a fume hood for about 24 hours and uh, if it dries out I'll sh upload what it looks like and then I will uh, throw it back into water and uh, it will soak up and absorb water. So there's a lot of advantages to using a gelatinous uh, electrolyte and uh, it should lose moisture a lot faster and uh, there's good diffusion through there. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye for now.